Hey everyone, how y'all doing? Welcome, welcome back to my channel and welcome to Vlogmas Day 2. So today I'm filming my book gift guide. So these are just some books from different genres that I think that you should buy for that book lover in your life or even books that you could put onto your own wish list if you are struggling to figure out what you want for Christmas. I love these kinds of videos so I hope that you guys are excited. I have another one coming up tomorrow which is going to be my book lover gift guide. So bookish items that you should buy for the book lover in your life or again things to put on your own wish list. So before we get into the video make sure to subscribe down below if you have not yet already because I am doing vlogmas and I'm uploading a video every single day this month and you don't want to miss it. So yeah, let's just get right on into the video. So I split this video up into some different genres just to give this video some sort of structure. So first we're going to start off with some fantasy sci-fi books. So the first book I have to talk about is a relatively new release and that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. So this is a bit more of like a literary fiction fantasy type of novel but I thought it still fit in this category anyways. So this book follows our main character Addie LaRue and she has made a deal with the devil so she will live forever but she is cursed to be forgotten by everyone she meets until 300 years later where she walks into a bookstore and somebody remembers her. It is a beautifully written story. It's so atmospheric. Just the way B.E. Schwab writes, every single word feels important and it's beautiful. I have so many tabs in my own copy because I loved this book so much and I haven't read any book like this before. It's definitely one that people have been loving. Everyone's been raving about this book. No but it can get Addie out of their head and I think that lots of people would be so happy to get this book underneath their tree for Christmas because it is just an absolutely amazing amazing book. The next one is actually a middle grade novel and that is Ghost Squad by Clarabel A. Ortega. This is a really fun book about our main character Lucelli who a few days before Halloween accidentally raises some malicious spirits with her best friend and they kind of have to go on this mission to gather up all these spirits and save their town. It's a really fun adorable story. Our main character is so endearing so is her best friend. There's a fat cat named Chunk and he is adorable. We have a badass super spunky grandma named Babette and this book has been compared to Coco and Ghostbusters so if the book lover you're buying for loves either of those things I think they're really really gonna enjoy this book. I definitely got major Coco vibes from it so I definitely like see why it's comped as that but it's just a really fun book so either you're buying for a young adult in your life or somebody a bit younger I think anybody could really enjoy this story. It's just a lot of fun. The next book is a young adult fantasy. This one is the Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. So this book's basically about a town named Four Paths and they've kind of been tormented by this beast called the Grey, but the descendants of the founding families are kind of there to protect the town. But this year things have been kind of weird and off and a lot of people have been dying and they kind of don't know what's going on. That was a really bad description, but this book is so much fun. I recently read it and it's a duology, so there's also a sequel. It's called The Deck of Omens. I have not read that one yet though. It's really, really atmospheric, which is something that I found I really, really enjoy in my fantasy book. I really like the characters and all their dynamics with each other. It's really interesting and it's also a little bit creepy as well And I also love like the entire design of this book It's just really really fun and this one has been comped as being similar to the Raven Boys or Stranger Things So if the book lover you're buying for likes either of those things again I definitely think that they would like this book, but it's just really really fun and I highly recommend it The next book is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab This is a really fun adult fantasy novel. We basically follow our main character Kel and he is an Antari who is basically this person who can travel between the different Londons. There's Black London, Grey London, Red London, and White London, and they all kind of have varying degrees of magic. And Kel is the only one that can travel between these different Londons. And one day Kel comes into possession of a piece of Black London, which is forbidden. And so he's trying to find a way to bring it back to Black London and get rid of it. But he ends up being pickpocketed by a girl named Lila Bard, and now he has to go and get it back from Lila Bard. She strikes up a deal with him saying that she will give it back to him if he takes her to the different Londons. And it's just a really, really fun series. It is a bit slow going. It takes a while to kind of get into the story, but it is so worth it. Like the payoff is just amazing. Even though it's a bit slower, you just fall in love with these characters, with Kel and Lila and Rye. If the person you're buying for is a character driven reader, I definitely think they would enjoy this series. There is plot to it, but like I said, it is a bit slow going. So my favorite part of it is definitely the characters and kind of the world. The next book on the list is Warcross by Marie Lu. This might venture a bit more into like sci-fi. I'm not entirely sure. But this one, we're basically following our main character, Amika, and she is a hacker, and she hacks herself into this game of Warcross, which is kind of this virtual reality game that has kind of taken the world by storm. Everybody plays it, everybody loves it. She hacks herself into the championship game, and she's not supposed to be seen by anybody, but she ends up being seen by everyone. And she gets a call from Hideo, who is the game's creator, and he invites her down to Tokyo, and she thinks she's in major trouble for hacking into the game, but when she gets there, she's instead offered a job to be Hideo's person 
personal bounty hunter and it is just such a cool book. I didn't think that I was going to like it. This is another duology. There are two books, Warcross and Wildcard. I did not think that I was going to like it because I don't really like video games or things like that and I don't typically enjoy reading about it. But I love Marie Lu so I thought I'd give it a chance and it is just so much fun. These characters are so fun. I fell in love with Amika and Hideo and the world is just so cool and just the whole concept of Warcross is really interesting. Like thinking about how virtual reality is basically like a part of their everyday life. It's not even just about the game. Like they are completely tuned into this virtual reality and it is just so so interesting. So if the person you're buying for it loves video games, virtual reality, maybe loves other Marie Lu books, I think that they would really really enjoy this book. It's just a really fun, unique, and interesting story. And the last book that I'm going to put for this category is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. This is a recent release. It just came out a couple months ago and this one is so good. I just read it and I'm obsessed with it. So this book is about our main character Yadriel. He's a trans male and his family is having a bit of trouble accepting his gender in terms of their culture and he is determined to prove to them that he is a real brujo by performing his kinsei on his own when his family will not let him do it. So he does his own kinsei on his own and then he tries to raise the ghost of his recently murdered cousin Miguel to try to figure out what happened to him but he ends up raising the wrong ghost. He ends up raising a boy named Julian and it's just oh it's such a good book. I've heard from so many people who are trans themselves say that this book means a lot to them and they felt really seen so that's really great and it's just the characters are just so endearing and beautiful and the story is amazing and I love anything to do with like ghosts and like creepiness like that so I really enjoyed that aspect of this book. I've heard like literally nothing but amazing things about this book. It made it onto the New York Times bestseller list which is amazing and I just think that so many more people should be reading and loving this book and talking about it because it's just so good. So if you're gonna buy like any book off this list I definitely recommend buying this one because it was just absolutely fantastic. Okay so now we're gonna get into my personal favorite genre which is contemporary. I have a lot for this one so let's just get into it. The first two that I'm gonna talk about are actually part of a companion series so it is Geekerella, The Princess and the Fangirl, and Bookish and the Beast. So you can buy just one or all three or if you know that they like one of them buy them the other one but this is one of my favorite contemporary series of all time. I love these books to death. So we have Geekerella which is a Cinderella retelling so we have our main character Elle and all she wants to do is go to Excelsicon which is a convention for her favorite franchise Starfield and Starfield is actually getting a new movie adaptation and she's pissed at the casting for the main character Carmendor because the guy who's playing him is this heartthrob like soap opera actor Darian and she is just not happy about it. We also follow Darian who is a huge fan of Starfield and he's really excited to be cast in this role. Some things happen and they end up getting each other's phone numbers but they don't know who the other person is. Elle has no idea that she's texting Darian and they just become really really close and it's a really fun Cinderella story. Definitely one of my favorite retellings of all time. And then we have The Princess and the Fangirl which is the Prince and the Papa retelling. So this book takes place all throughout Excelsior Con. So we have our main character Jessica who is an actor from Starfield and she wants nothing to do with this franchise. She thought she would do the one movie and be done with it and move on with her life but she's now being like tacked on for a sequel and she just wants to leave this franchise behind her. The character of Princess Amara behind her. She wants nothing to do with it. And then we follow our other main character Imogen and she is a huge fan of Princess Amara and Jessica and Imogen end up switching places because they look quite similar. So Imogen ends up acting as Jess for the entire convention and Jess ends up acting as Imogen for the entire convention and this one's just really really fun. And then we have Bookish and the Beast which I think is definitely one of my favorites from this series and this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. So we basically follow our main character Vance and he is another actor from the Starfield series and he's been getting a bit of bad press recently so he's been shipped by his parents off to this little town to kind of avoid the press and kind of let things wind down a little bit. And then we also follow Rosie who is again a huge Starfield fan. Her and her mom really loved the books for Starfield and one day she ends up like seeing this dog and she ends up following this dog to this like big nice house where Vance just currently happens to be staying and she ends up ruining like a priceless copy of a Starfield book that she finds in a library in this house and to repay the debt that she now owes she ends up organizing this entire library with Vance and it's so cute. So if the person you're buying for loves contemporary books, loves a fairy tale retellings, loves fairy tales in general, definitely recommend these. And you don't have to buy them all or read them all in order or anything. So if they just really love Beauty and the Beast, you can for sure just buy them Bookish and the Beast and it doesn't matter if they've read these ones or not. But it is just such a fun series and Ashley Poston does fairy tale retellings so incredibly well that I just, I can't recommend these books enough. And then we have Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. This is a very, very loose Grease retelling. So we follow our main character, Ollie, and he's kind of had this 
really amazing a summer fling with this boy named Will but the summer comes to an end they say their goodbyes but then Ollie finds out that he is staying in this town because his aunt has cancer and they don't know how much longer she has and so him and his family decide to stay so they can help out with the family and help out with their aunt kind of just be with her so Ollie tries to get into contact with Will and lets him know that he's gonna be staying in town but he never gets back to him and then Ollie goes to school finds out he goes to the same school as Will but Will is not currently out to his friends so he kind of can't be with Ollie or let people know that he was with Ollie over the summer it's such a good book and the Grease references are literally done so well so if the person you're buying for it loves Grease they're gonna love this book and seeing all those little nods the songs from the movie and like characters from the movie it's just a lot of fun then I have another companion series so it's the Dimpleverse book so we have When Dimple Met Rishi there's something about Sweetie and 10 Things I Hate About Pinky When Dimple Met Rishi we basically follow our main character Dimple and all she wants to do is go to science camp but all her parents want to do is set her up in an arranged marriage and then we follow Rishi who is like totally game for arranged marriage that's like totally his thing he's very into tradition his parents end up talking to Dimple's parents and saying that they should set them up into an arranged marriage so they send Rishi off to the science camp to meet Dimple but Dimple has no idea but Rishi doesn't know that Dimple doesn't have any idea and so he kind of goes to this science camp thinking he's just there to get to know his future bride but then he finds out that Dimple actually isn't game for this plan and it's just a really really adorable book I love it a whole lot and then we have there's something about sweetie we follow our main character sweetie her mom is kind of under the belief that nobody's gonna love sweetie nobody really attractive is gonna love sweetie if she stays the way that she is if she stays fat and doesn't try to lose weight but sweetie doesn't want to change who she is she's very proud of who she is she is a runner and she just she loves who she is and she doesn't understand why her mom can't also see that and then we follow ashish who is actually rishi's brother from when dimple met rishi so ashish does not want his parents to set him up like his brother rishi but he's had a bit of romantic difficulty recently his ex-girlfriend broke up with him and so he challenges his parents to set him up and they want to set him up with sweetie so sweetie agrees to date ashish to prove to her parents that a hot guy can love her and like her for who she is and it's just oh it's such a beautiful book we have 10 things i hate about pinky so we follow pinky and her mom kind of thinks like the lowest of her thinks that she just makes all these bad decisions with her life dates the wrong guys does the wrong things and frankly pinky is tired of it and then we also follow samir he is set up for like the perfect summer of his life with the perfect internship at a law firm but then the internship kind of falls through so pinky ends up contacting samir and asks him to be her fake boyfriend for the summer so she can kind of prove to her parents that she can make good decisions oh my god this one it's so cute these books are just so much fun if you like fake dating we've got that if you like fun summer time things we have that this series is just literally so so cute and i am a huge fan of it so i definitely recommend buying these books then we have eliza and her monsters by francesca zapia this is a book about a main character eliza and she is a super popular creator of the webcomic monstrous sea but nobody knows besides her family and few internet friends that she is the creator of it she kind of likes being under the radar but then one day a new kid comes to school named the wallace he's a huge monstrous sea fan and he actually writes fan fiction for monstrous sea and is also writing like a novelization version of it they end up becoming friends but wallace has no idea that eliza is the creator it is such a cute book it has anxiety representation in it internet friendships and i just think that it's super fun and then we have wonder by rj palatio this is my favorite book of all time so just buy it for that reason alone but this is a middle grade we follow our main character augie he has a facial deformity and because of all the surgeries he's had to undergo he hasn't been able to go to public school but his parents decide that he should go to public school for the first time before fifth grade he goes and he ends up being bullied and he is having trouble fitting in but it is such a beautiful heartwarming story and i think that anybody of any age can enjoy this book and should read this book it is just an absolute masterpiece and i am in love with it so i definitely recommend this for like anybody like literally anybody i recommend this book for and then we have i wish you all the best by mason devert this is a book about our main character ben and they come out as non-binary to their family at the beginning of the book and basically they're kicked out and so they have to contact their estranged sister to see if they can stay with them their sister says yes and so they have to start a whole new school deal with being kicked out by their parents but they end up meeting this really great boy named nathan and it's just oh it's so so cute i also think it's quite important because it does have that own voices non-binary rep so i definitely recommend it for that as well it is just a really great book really fun it came out last year and i just i highly recommend it then we have what if it's us by becky albertalli and adam silvera this is a really sweet and cute summer romance book we follow our main characters arthur and ben they have a meet cute with each other at a post office but they forget to exchange information with each other so they don't know how to find each other but i believe it's 
Arthur who posts a miscommunications post trying to find Ben and they end up meeting and going on a series of bad first dates and it is just a really really cute book and I definitely recommend it. It has musical references so if the person you're buying for loves musicals I recommend this one and it's just a really fun book also if they're fans of Becky Albertalli or Adam Silver's works they're gonna like this. It's just literally one of my favorite contemporaries of all time. Now I have three quick non-fiction recommendations. To Selena with Love by Chris Perez. This is a book written by Selena's husband and it's kind of all about not only Selena's life but her life with Chris Perez and their kind of whole relationship. It also touches on her death but that's definitely not the main focus of this book. It's mainly just about their life together and it's a really really beautiful book. I read this back in September and I was just completely floored by it. I was sobbing by the end. It was just so so good. So definitely if the person you're buying for loves Selena to like any capacity I think that they would really really love this book. It was just really beautiful so I definitely recommend this one. And then I have I'll Be There For You the one about friends by Kelsey Miller. This is a book obviously all about the friends phenomenon. Kelsey Miller talks about how the show came to be, all of the pilot information, the casting information, and then she also touches on why it's so popular and the, like the resurgence of it with it being on Netflix. It's just a really fun book so if the person you're buying for loves friends I definitely recommend this one. This is another one that made me cry. I, I cry a lot but this book was just so so informative. I learned so many new things about friends that I did not know beforehand so I definitely recommend this one. And the next book I recommend is Stranger Things the World's Turned Upside Down. So this is the official behind the scenes companion book. This is just a really fun book. It has so much information on the show, on the characters, all the information from the first two seasons and I highly recommend this book if the person you're buying for loves Stranger Things. And then very quickly I just have two mystery thriller type of books. So the first one is Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a book that is really really interesting. It's told in like really fun formatting. So part of it is told in like this podcast format. So we follow Wes who has this podcast and he's trying to uncover this mystery surrounding Sadie and her disappearance and also her sister's disappearance and that's really interesting. Especially if you listen to the audiobook. And then we follow Sadie who is going on this like mission to try to find out what happened to her sister who has recently gone missing and it is just so good the mystery in this book is amazing I like I said I really love the formatting of it and it was just really interesting because the entire book you're trying to find out what happens to them and oh it's so good like when I tell you this book is good I'm telling you like it is so amazing I was completely blown away by it and I've heard like nothing but amazing things about it so I definitely recommend this one and then I talk about this book all the time but we have Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson we follow our main character Claudia and she finds out that her best friend Monday has gone missing but nobody else seems to care or notice that she's gone and nobody's doing anything about it so it's kind of up to Claudia to figure out what happened to her best friend and it's such a good book really really heartbreaking though like it's a really really heavy book but it is so so worth the read and it's really raw and it's so beautifully written and I just I definitely recommend this book but just know that like it's very hard hitting and then the last category is just straight up romances so the first one is Red White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston this is a super popular book I'm sure you've probably heard of it but this book is about our main character Alex and he's kind of always had this like feud nemesis rivalry going on with the Prince of England, Henry, and then one day there's a royal wedding that he has to attend and there ends up being a little bit of a conflict, a little bit of a, a little bit of a situation where they get into a fight and they knock over this really expensive wedding cake and then it gets a whole bunch of bad publicity. So to kind of prevent all this bad publicity, they have to pretend that they are best friends for the cameras and they end up realizing that maybe they don't actually hate each other and it's just, oh, it's such a beautiful book. Love the characters. I think that's the thing that I love the most. Most. The characters are just really, really amazing, so I definitely recommend this one. Then we have Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is a summer romance book, so we basically follow our two main characters, Augustus and January, and they are staying in neighboring beach houses for the summer. They are both best-selling authors. Augustus writes literary fiction, January writes romance novels, and they're both dealing with some writer's block. So for the summer, they decide to swap genres to see if that will help them combat the writer's block. And it is such a beautiful book, like literally Literally, I loved this book so much. It was so funny and cute and amazing, well written. I just, I literally enjoyed everything about this book. So I definitely recommend it. Oh my god, I really love this one as well. We have Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is a book that again, people have been raving about since last year and it's so well deserved. This is a book basically following our main character, Chloe. And she is a chronically ill computer geek. And after a near death experience, she decides to create a get a life list of things that she really wants to do, kind of get her out of her 
her comfort zone. So she ends up recruiting the superintendent of her building, Red, to help her complete this list. And it is just, mm, it is steamy. It is gorgeous. It is just, oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> I love these characters. I love the romance so much, and I highly recommend it. And then for the book that got me into romance books this year, we have The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This is such a fun, low-key, enemies-to-lovers, hate-to-love romance. It doesn't really last that long. We basically follow our main character, Lucy, and she's kind of always had this rivalry with her, like, desk mate, Joshua. She does not like him. He does not like her. But they end up going up for the same promotion motion at work and they also might realize that they might not actually hate each other and it's just a really cute book. A lot of tension in it, a lot of cuteness in it. Oh my god I love it so much so I definitely recommend this one as well. Those are all the books that I am recommending today to put on your Christmas wish list or to buy for the book lover in your life. I love all of these books obviously so I hope that this has helped you in some way. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a huge thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Comment down below if you love any of these books if you're going to be adding any of them to your Christmas wish list. I'd really love to know. Subscribe down below if you have not yet already. I am uploading a video every day in December so you're not going to want to miss it and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!